Dodgers beat the Reds last night, and uh, they're currently the top team in the National League West. Their pitching coach is the uh, former Major League pitcher and uh, former All-Star from the Chicago Cubs, Mark Pryor, back on the program. Hey, Mark, how are you today? I'm doing well. Yourself? I'm doing great. Been a long time, and uh, congrats on uh, the gig as the Dodgers pitching coach. Uh, give us an idea of what what is the role on game day for the pitching coach? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think basically preparing our starters, making sure our starters and our catcher, um, you know, that everybody's on the same page from a game planning standpoint. Uh, I think that's probably the primary role as far as the game, preparing for the game. Uh, so it's a lot of, you know, kind of backroom uh, preparation with our advanced coaches and uh, our infield, outfield coaches on positioning and just making sure we're all on the same page on how we're going to pitch guys and attack them and then making sure we're positioned accordingly, hopefully that uh, so we can maybe steal some outs, uh, whether it's shifting or not shifting um, as, as things change. And then as well as just checking in with all our other pitchers, obviously with uh, the starters have bullpens in between outings, making sure that, uh, you know, we're, we're prepared there, getting ready for the next start. Uh, we go to Atlanta this weekend. So today we'll be getting kind of like Julio uh, and Andrew Heaney ready for those, those starts this weekend. Um, and then just kind of anything that comes up on a daily basis, which there's a myriad of things that, that come up daily. So uh, uh, it's, it's fun. It's uh, it's always engaged. No day no day is the same, and uh, I think that's what keeps it, uh, you know, keeps the adrenaline going constantly. Explain to me when a pitcher has it in the bullpen but not on the mound, or vice versa. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can explain that. I've, uh, I mean, as a player, uh, I learned quickly not to put too much stock in how I was thrown in the bullpen, whether that was good or bad. Uh, because things for some reason change when you get out there. Uh, and I think definitely as a coach, I always get asked, like, how was he? And uh, I <laughs> always just kind of shrug my shoulders and say, you know, he was fine because I've seen guys lights out in the bullpen. Uh, and, and then as soon as they get out there, I mean, even last night, Tony was lights out in the bullpen and, and he struggled to find his command, you know, in those first couple batters. Uh, and it cost him a homer, a homer to India. But, uh, um, I've seen Kirsch, you know, one of the best games I've seen him ever pitch uh, was in San Diego a couple of years ago. And I mean, he couldn't find the plate in the, in the bullpen. And he even joked about it uh, on the way walk in. He's like, Hey, you know, did that scare you? And I was like, no, you look great. <laughs> and, you know, he went out and, you know, I think he struck out eight, nine guys and went six innings plus, And uh, it was just lights out against obviously a very, very good offensive team with Machado and Tatis. So, you know, it's a weird thing. You know, it, you know, sometimes it clicks. Sometimes it takes until the fourth inning for it to click, too. So, uh, I, I don't know. It, it's got to be something where, you know, you cross that line, so the adrenaline gets picked up a little bit, and, and maybe you just kind of get off. Your timing gets off a little bit. And and I think sometimes when you're bad in the bullpen, you just, if you've been around and you've done it long enough, you just kind of say, screw it. And you'll be like, you know, I know how to pitch, and I'll, I'll remember once I get out there. So, it's just kind of one of those things that you don't really have an answer to. And you just, you know, you, as a pitching coach, you just cross your fingers and you hope for the best sometimes that uh, these guys will figure it out because they're really good at doing that. Is it fair to look at today's starting pitchers or any pitcher as it almost feels like everybody is headed towards Tommy John surgery? Or it's, it's almost like that badge of courage that you're eventually, if, you, if your job is to throw as hard as you can for as long as you can, is it avoidable? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's avoidable. I mean, it's it's definitely something that's, uh, you know, it's part of our game. It's part of our industry. And I don't think uh, as, a, as an industry we've been able to, you know, tackle that, that problem of how to avoid it. And, you know, we've, I think from, you know, guys, you're trying to protect guys, you're trying to limit some of their pitches, you know, those guys go down. You push guys and, you know, said that they're athletic and there are, their delivery is great, those guys go down. And then you got guys that, you know, from scouts to evaluators to coaches, you say that's not going to work, and they never go down. So it, it's not a – it's definitely not an exact science. It's not something that anybody – even if it, the success rate of Tommy John surgeries and guys coming back is, is pretty high, it's not something you ever want to do. So, um, But, that, you know, I'm sure there's some correlation to the, to the velocity. I think, you know, the amount of high – 
high leverage, high intense throws that these guys make on a daily basis uh, to generate the forces is probably, you know, long term probably not a great thing. But uh, it's it's what plays right now, and this is how the game's evolved. And um, you know, it, it's. It's pretty amazing what these guys can do physically. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes there's a cost, and, and that's you know your elbow or your shoulder or, or something. And uh, you just try to you try to minimize that. I think you know from where it was 20 years ago when I first came in. I think the industry's grown leaps and bounds in a positive way as far as training methods, uh, you know the sports performance industry and what the strength coaches can do with guys to prepare them to put their bodies in good positions. So uh, I do think that we've come a long way in trying to help prevent it. Uh, but I just don't think it's inevitable. I don't think it's avoidable with everybody. Knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently when you were with the Cubs? Uh, I don't know if I would have done anything differently, to be honest. I mean, I, I think I'm a product of, of who I was and what I did and in the experiences that I had. So I, I don't think I would definitely have changed anything. Would I have liked to have you know, played longer at a higher level? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, what I've maybe adjusted some of my training regiments and maybe some of my, you know, some of my delivery stuff, you know, arm action, knowing what I know now. Yeah. I probably would have made those adjustments maybe sooner than after the, you know, post injuries. Um, but at the end of the day, like my experiences are, are kind of how, you know, they've shaped who I am today. And I think they've only helped me as a coach. So I definitely wouldn't have changed anything. And I loved uh, the moments that we had in Chicago, but there's probably some things that, you know, we just didn't know back then uh, as probably as far as the way the body worked and the delivery worked and, and how to train, you know, more as an individual versus just kind of the masses. So I probably hopefully would have been able to, you know, you know, do some things differently uh, to kind of maximize my body and make it a little bit more efficient for the way I worked. Um, but as far as, you know, my decisions to, to pitch, to, to, to go out there every fifth day, and even if I wasn't feeling good, I, I wouldn't have changed it. He's Mark Pryor. He's the Dodgers pitching coach, former uh, baseball pitcher, certainly for the Chicago Cubs. Uh, I still go back to that Kerry Wood day in April against the Astros. And I know that, you know, they rank these. I think it was his sixth start of his career. I don't know if there's another dominating performance. Um, and I know they rank these. How would you quantify or, or describe, uh, you know, 20 strikeouts in a game as a rookie against a really good Astros lineup. Yeah, very, very good team. Um, I, I mean, it's, you know, it's got to be up there as, as at least a top three, if not, you know, one of the best. I think just when you, when you lump in all the variables to, to, like you said, you know, he is a rookie against, you know, his fifth or sixth outing against a really good offensive team against, you know, some of those guys are in the Hall of Fame or borderline Hall of Famers. Uh, you know, cold, rainy, kind of ugly day, um, and just the stuff that I think you go back and you watch the videos, and you know, now we can quantify these these things and these pitch movements, but just to see the the movement on some of those pitches, the breaking balls that he was throwing are were just ridiculous. And he, even now, it, you know, when everybody says the velocity and the movements today are so much nastier, I mean, it would be hard-pressed to <laughs> see some of the things that he was doing with the baseball that you still don't see necessarily on a daily basis. Here. It was a so, Frisbee. He was, uh, he, was, he was throwing a Frisbee yeah. <laughs> that day, Mark. He was. I, I love that yeah, description because it was, it was true. Yeah, no, and it's, uh, I think when you when you put all the put all those things together, I mean, it's got to be one of the best performances of all time. And I'm sure there's performances on you know in playoff games and stuff like that that uh, you know might rank in theoretically above them. But when you're just looking at raw stuff and what he did and, and how he made hitters look, it's definitely <laughs> one of the top two or threes. You know, maybe like a Randy Johnson performance was probably in there somewhere. Um, you know, in his 20 strikeout games. Uh, you know, Clemens back in the day when he was just blowing guys by and those. So, you know, there's, there's definitely some, been some dominant performances, but I think just the sheer awkward swings from some of these really, really good hitters, uh, it's, it's pretty impressive. You faced prime Barry Bonds. I got you, you hit him one time and the benches cleared. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, no, I remember that. That was, uh, that was an intriguing day for sure. <laughs> Why? Why was it so intriguing? Uh, he's a uh, he was a very uh, 
imposing figure. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was a game, it was the third game of a series. And, uh, you know, it was, I'm trying to think, I think Woody threw the first game and, and might've hit him on a couple breaking balls. And then I think Barry took, uh, one of our pitchers deep in the middle game twice in a game. And, um, you know, it was, my intention was, I, I think I threw one of the three changeups I threw all year with the pitch before. And then we tried to go back inside and it just got away from me. And, you know, obviously he didn't, he didn't appreciate it. And I totally understand that. And, uh, but in the heat of the moment, you know, I was young and, and, and probably a little brash at the time. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I've maybe said some things that I, you know, <laughs> probably weren't the most respectful thing to somebody of his stature. So, uh, fortunately I had some older veterans that, you know, <laughs> grabbed me by the, by the collar and pulled me out of there and said, you know, let's, let's tone it down. So, uh, no, he was, uh, I mean, he was a force for sure. And, um, you know, fortunately I only had to face him three or four times cause we, he wasn't in our division, but, uh, there wasn't a lot you could throw by, you know, get by him or even make him look silly. It was, it was ridiculous during that stretch. How would you sum up the Dodgers pitching staff? Uh, you know, I, I think we're doing well. You know, injuries have, uh, like, as in most teams, injuries have, have played a role in where we're at right now. But I, I really like the way our guys have come together and stepped up, uh, you know, to fill come, you know, the Walker Buehler void uh, when Clayton was out. You know, we've had some guys, and Tony Gonsolin and Tyler Anderson in the starting rotation have, and have done an extremely good job of, of filling those. Uh, those shoes uh tony's been pitching extremely well all year and he's been really consistent so that's been a nice development and see his growth uh i I think our bullpen you know is always undervalued at times in the four years that i've been here um they they come together as a group and and really buy into you know pitching as a group and pitching as one as their own like kind of entity versus individuals and and that's really fun to watch those guys they really come in they step into any role in any situation uh and and they get their outs and they do their job and that's kind of how their mindset is is to kind of pick each other up and pass a baton so uh it's really fun to watch our bullpen when it comes together Um, at times they've really had to pick up the slack during these injuries Uh, in these last month we played a lot of games and a lot of days uh, so they got taxed, and, and there was never, uh, you know, in a complaint. They wanted the ball every single day, and they really want to go out and try to close games out. And so um, from from that standpoint, it, it, it's been really awesome to see, and I think ultimately that will pay dividends at the end of the year when, when these games, hopefully we get some guys healthy. Uh, we get back to kind of, you know, maybe not full force, but somewhat of, you know, the way, you know, our front office have put this team together. But, uh, these big games that these guys are pitching now, I think, pay dividends at the end. And, uh, you know, I, I think we're going to be a strong group um, towards the end of this to hopefully help our offense go out and win some games. And, um, you know, it, it's it's still a long way to go, but I've uh, been really happy with the way they've been pitching, uh, attacking the strike zone and getting outs. Good to talk to you again, Mark, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. I uh, appreciate it, Dan. Thanks. That's Mark Pryor, Dodgers pitching coach, of course, he was one of those can't miss. He was a can't miss prospect because we looked at his delivery. I remember baseball tonight would break down his delivery. Man, that that's the kind of delivery you want. That'll hold up, you know, for a long career. But we also did that with Steven Strasburg as well. They were like, he can't miss. Now, Strasburg's had a better career than Mark did. But when Mark and Kerry Wood were there and the Cubs were competing, man, it was a fun place to be.